So I was hoping to be able to wrap this up in one more video, but as I started editing um, all the footage, the carving took a lot more video footage to show what I wanted to show um, with all the carving that I was originally anticipating. So there's actually going to be two more parts to this series. This week's video will detail carving um, the flower decorative pattern on the top as well as the flower, flower decorative pattern on the bottom. And then the fourth video will be making the drawer poles. I made those on the lathe and then carved them by hand. Um, and then putting this all together as well as the finish. And I said from the beginning the finish was going to be paint. This whole thing is going to be painted. So I was fortunate enough to have a piece of, of hardwood lumber laying around that would be perfect for the top, especially since I was going to be carving the edge. This is half of a piece of an old kitchen tabletop that someone gave me. I used the other half of it for something else and it worked out nicely for the top of this. So I just trimmed off the edge because I didn't need that weird chamfered 80 style piece on the edge and then I cut it down to size. So this top she didn't want it to be square so I'm cutting it as oval shaped as I can without making the top super large. Can make this a really nice oval but it would overhang the top of the cabinet quite severely which we didn't want to do. So I'm just pretty much rounding over the edges in the front so the sides are more bowed than, than an oval. And then once I had that, I did that with my jigsaw. Um, I planed down the edge because the jigsaw doesn't give a super clean cut and then sanded it and then I could start carving into this. So the customer um, didn't really give me a ton of specifics in her drawing the uh, flowers are roses, but I asked her if she specifically wanted roses and she said she likes all flowers. So to kind of um, get creative with it. Now this top wasn't long enough by about an inch and a half. So here I am just cutting down a piece of cherry and gluing it to the back side of the top and then I could cut that down um, to the same shape as the sides and then it would be deep enough for my project. So I let this set up overnight and then I can trim down the edges. Now I knew because this was solid that um, carving into the end grain would be a lot harder than, than the flat grain or the face grain but it was just too convenient to have that top. Originally I was thinking of bending a piece of wood around the edge but that would have been um, a whole different ordeal so it was worth it to to have this piece of wood even though on the edges it was going to be carving into end grain so you could see how that top bows when it's sitting on top of the cabinet. So I can't draw at all, so what I usually do is I find a pattern that I like enough online, I print it out to a size that fits what the pattern I need, and then I'll trace it with some carbon paper. So I'm tracing it with just um, a pointed piece of dowel, because if you use a pencil sometimes it junks up the image enough um, after you keep drawing on it that it's hard to see. So the carbon paper on the bottom and then I'm using little pencil marks to align it edge to edge. I just can trace the pattern I want and then I'll have nice guidelines on the piece. Now usually the pattern I don't stick to specifically. The one I'm printing out I usually change it a little bit but it's really nice to have a rough outline completely on the piece. Now if you're really talented and you can draw um, you, you can avoid this step. So since these were flowers, I tried to um, make this go as fast as possible because it was a lot of surface area to carve. And I had a bit that's for making plugs for dowels, and I used that on the center of all the flowers, not only to, to help with, with get that, getting that circle in the center, because circles are really hard to get uh, perfect, but also to create the depth in the middle of the flower already. So I carved most of this and then filmed the last little bit because at this point I got it down to a perfect science. The end grain was a lot harder to carve, but it went pretty quickly. I don't love uh, power carving, but with something like this where time is of the essence, it would have taken so much longer to carve this by hand. So I just have a rough bit. It's a little uh, cylinder shaped bit with, with rough sides and I'm going through and removing the bulk of the material. So that's what I will do first. You're basically outlining this pattern and removing a bunch of the material. I'm 
um, focusing on removal, not so much uh, defining the lines yet. So with the flower, I want the, the shape of it to kind of sink into the wood. So you can see I removed a ton of material around the center of the flower. And then the pattern in between the flowers is kind of like a decorative swirl, almost leaf sort of sort of thing that's going on. So I'm just going through and undercutting along that entire side of uh, my pencil marks, which is the carbon paper. And by creating undercuts, it creates depth. So, depth. so when you can cut underneath an object, not only does it, cr it creates layers, so then it looks like um, what you're carving, even though it's a relief, is, is deeper than it actually is. So that is what this bit is doing. It's just I'm going through and creating that initial round of undercuts and kind of shaping out the piece. And then this, this one in the front, which looks most like a leaf, I'm going through and removing the bulk of the material on that as well, kind of rounding over all of my edges. I have a paintbrush to kind of remove the dust because there's a lot of dust. And that kind of settles on the top of the piece as I'm going. So the next bit I'm using is a very fine point bit. Arguably, this is the one step that you could skip if, if you want to. It's hard to see on the camera exactly what's going on, but I'm once again just reinforcing all of these undercuts. This bit does a lot of nice work where the flower meets the leaves. It really makes the flower pop out from the leaves, but it's kind of hard to see on camera. So then the second bit I'm using is, is almost a rounded over triangle. I was originally using a straight triangle, but the rounded over um, aspect to this bit made it so that the leaves weren't as flat. They had they had um, more movement by using using the, the rounded over shape of that cone. So this is where I'm starting to go in in detail. So you could see I'm just kind of defining those lines. Whereas with the bit that I was using before just to remove material, this one I'm going through and really making sure that um, I'm rounding over to, to all of my pencil marks and making it look a lot nicer. So this is just going in and reinforcing that undercut. It's not removing a, a ton of material, especially not as much as the first one, but it's just uh, cleaning up all of those lines, making everything a lot smoother, starting to remove some of the choppiness that the first two bits left behind and it's working really well to round over all of my edges so I don't have a lot of sharp parts sticking out on the design. So some of this I edited out because otherwise it would just be ridiculously long, but you could see it's just a matter of going through each part, and once I'm done, I'm, I'm gonna check again and go through. So this is almost, um, a this is the bit I use to essentially sand. Um, it's one of those diamond bits this bit's great for working on wood. It really smooths everything out and leaves a really nice finish. So instead of going through this with sandpaper, this is what I use. And once the carving is about to 90 to 95% is when I'll switch to this bit because this will still remove material, but it will also clean up all of those edges. And obviously on camera, the, um, the depth is not gonna be good as in person, the depth that your eye can see but you could kind of see, I wanted this, this is obviously a relief carving, but I wanted it to look as three-dimensional as possible. And that design wrapped around the entire edge of the top part of this dresser. And like I said, the end grain just took a lot longer, but it wasn't extremely difficult. So then for the bottom in the original drawing, she had a decorative arc on the bottom with a, fl with a flower uh, carved as well. So to start that, I'm using a scrap piece of plywood because this isn't structural. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And I was just using a five gallon bucket to kind of create some arcs. And then with those arcs, I would go through and smooth over the curves with a pencil to remove those sharp points. So with that bucket and kind of by eye is how I'm creating these curves. Once I had that, I cut it out with my jigsaw. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Went through and cut out the shape. And then I will un edge band the bottom edge of this so that you don't see those plywood edges. So then for the carving, I don't, I have a ton of material on hand for carving because I don't do a ton of carving, but I keep scraps from all of my projects. So I had some cherry laying around and that's what this is going to be made out of. 
Once again, I found a picture online that I liked enough to copy off of because I can't draw. And I taped um, the flowered portion, which is roses, to the leaves to kind of create this arced design that I liked. I transferred that onto the cherry. And then I wanted it a little bit longer. So I moved that pattern over and drew two extra leaves on either side. I left this cherry slab pretty thick. It's, it's a little less than three quarters of an inch because once again, I wanted to create depth with this. And then once I had that, I could use a, um, a scroll saw to cut this out, which was the easiest way for, for me to do it. It was a little, not depressing, but upsetting to make these sorts of parts out of cherry knowing it was gonna be painted, but I don't like carving pine or anything like that. And this is what I had. So then once again, I could use the carbon paper and just transfer my pattern onto, onto the cherry. And then those are all of my marks. I could kind of add in the leaves and, and work off of that. So I didn't get a ton of great footage for this because this was one of those pieces where I was trying to film over my shoulder and the angles were just terrible. So I did that one side and then I'm gonna recreate it on this side for, for the video. So I first go through and define all of my lines with a chip knife. This is just so that when you're, you're cutting away pieces, you're not uh, uh, cutting off parts that you don't want. That, that chip knife will break up the grain and you'll only be able to remove stuff before that chip knife. It's almost like a stop cut. So on the two end leaves, they're a lot shallower than the, than the ones towards the flowers. That's where the depth comes in. So the first step is to pretty much just remove a ton of material, starting with the end leaf and then working my way in. So the end leaf is about um, three quarters thinner than the ones that are closest to the flower. So you can see I'm just going through and removing that material. Now this I did mostly with hand tools. I didn't do a lot of power carving. I actually carved this before I did the um, the tabletop, but put it in the second half in the video because it, it made more sense to put it that way. So then once I have the depth I'm going for, you can see I'm just redefining those lines and with the leaves, I'm creating a, a crevice in the middle and then um, I'm feathering it out to the edges. The nicer you feather it out to the edges, the thinner the leaf is gonna look. It won't look as bulky. So I'm just using a series of carving tools in order to thin out that leaf and give it as much dimension as possible. So there's actually a, a pretty dramatic uh, curvature to each one of these leaves. And then I could do the exact same thing to the one on the top. I work out the, uh, for the edges towards the center. And then the power carving comes into play, uh, especially since this is cherry. It's not um, what an ideal carving wood. So I'm using uh, the power carver to, to get in all those crevices so I don't have to piece it out with, with the hand tools. So then you can see as I get closer, I'm just defining all those lines and then going through and creating those arcs on the leaves. I also taped around this entire piece so I didn't scratch up any of the plywood as I was going. And then the same thing for the flower. So for the flower, I worked from the edges into the center and I would do the exact same thing. I would use the knife to, to create my initial cuts and then I would use a knife or um, a scooped sort of chisel to go through and remove the material starting from the edge of, of the flower leaves towards the center. So it created almost, almost a, a spoon shape on each one of the leaves. So that creates a lot of depth depth and makes it look more so like a rose. So you can see as I'm going, I'm, I'm just kind of um, scooping out that material and working my way towards the center. So this is obviously much easier to do with, with hand tools if it's not end grain. Obviously you still have to go with the grain and then not go against it. And then once again, once I have, you could see there's a lot of just um, sort of fuzzy patchy material underneath all of my undercuts. And this is where I'll use a, uh, a power carver to go in and clean all that out. It just does a great job of doing that. And then just going around in the circle till I hit the center. And then the flowers are pretty much done. And then this is 
pretty much what that finished carving looks like. I was thinking of doing some detailing on the leaves, but since this is going to be painted and it's on the bottom, I just think they would be lost in the paint and it wouldn't really be worth the effort of adding all of that detailing. 